Tá pronto? Tá pronto? Vai pra luta! Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, wherever you are watching this from. Welcome to another episode of the sixth round where we are going to be talking about UFC 237 in Brazil. Now we have another pay per view, so I know what you're thinking. God damn, I should have saved my money a little bit better this month, but I promise you the lineup is fantastic and well worth the investment. That's right, I called it an investment because it's going to be a UFC to remember. We're going to start off right away with the Coco main event where we had the featherweight clash against the previous. Featherweight GOAT in all of MMA and still the number one contender for that strap in my opinion and that is Jose Aldo going up against a crazy specimen of an Australian MMA fighter Alexander Volkanovsky He is on a 16 fight win streak and he is a slugger. When we look at his record, he has plenty of knockouts. He loves to stand there and bang. If there is one thing that we could say about Volkanovski is that he is not, with all due respect, the most well-rounded of mixed martial artists. He has just a few minuscule submissions on his record, but nonetheless, if we ask him and ask anybody that's watched Volkanovski, his main sole purpose of fighting is to knock his opponent out. And he is subject to opening. Maybe not in his last fight where he knocked the hell out of Chad. Chad Mendes, but his opponent, Jose Aldo, has beat him twice now. And besides Chad Mendes and Darren Elkins, there hasn't really been a top name that Volkanovski's fought. Nonetheless, he's on a 16-fight win streak for a reason. He's really good. He's had six fights in the UFC and obviously still undefeated. But I think that could change here when he goes against MMA legend Jose Aldo. He likes to set things up, keep that distance, and throw those nasty leg kicks. FYI, he has one of the most deadliest leg kicks in all of MMA sports. So Volkanovski, you better be prepared. Jose Aldo's only had three losses in his last in the last like 28 fights of his career, only losing to Max Holloway which is now slated to be known as the most amazing featherweight in the planet. And of course, the notorious one, Conor McGregor, which I really wish they would run back. But nonetheless, we are here and we are fighting Volkanovski and he is not somebody to be overlooked, but Jose Aldo knows that and Jose Aldo always prepares in that way. So does most of the fighters coming out of the Nova Union camp anyways. He doesn't want to go in there and get too sloppy because Volkanovski has that scary power. He also has that aesthetic, really pumped up muscular body and he bears so much significant power that Jose is going to know that he's going to gonna want to run that gas tank out within the first minute of the opening round and put Jose Aldo away. Jose Aldo has to be patient, be prepared to set up the distance with those leg kicks, which I really hope he do because like I said, leg kicks almost second to none. His career is on a huge resurgence, knocking out top contender Renato Moicano, which was making noise in the featherweight division, and of course the heavy, heavy handed, possibly the heaviest hand in the featherweight division, Jeremy Stevens with amazing body shots, and amazing body shots is your key to victory against Volkanovski. Don't go head hunting. Take down the tree by knocking out the base of so the legs and the body. And I think that's what Jose Aldo is going to do. So who am I going to call? I am going to call Jose Aldo, but I am going to call him taking it to the end of the second, early third round because Volkanovski is still tough as nails and he is quite durable. But Jose Aldo is going to play this smart and work the bottom of that tree to just see that son of a bitch fall. Now, when we go to the co-main event, we have the best ever fighter to come out of Brazil and arguably to many to come out of MMA period and that is Anderson the Spider Silva and he's going up against Jared Canornier Now, Jared Canornier has won in his last three fights. His last victory was coming off an impressive victory against top threat in the division, David Branch. He shut that down real quick. It's going to be great to see what Jared Canornier could do now because now he is at a healthier weight for him. Before fighting at the 205, he carried too much excess body weight, which I found slowed him down, especially in the later rounds. And especially fighting a guy like Anderson Silva now, it's a blessing that you're at 185 because you're going to need all the endurance you can get because Anderson Silva has known to be not such a quick finisher. Although methodical, although one of the best counter strikers in the game, he is known to be not as exciting, especially if his opponent, like Jared Canornier, hopefully it's not going to be the case, but is a little too timid to engage because Anderson Silva's not really known to engage. Like his last fight against Israel Adesanya, in my opinion, he could have easily picked up that W, but instead he waited. He let time go by. He let the clock run. He wore unnecessary combos when he gets too cocky and puts his hand 
hands down. Don't put your hands down against a guy like Jared Canornier. Don't, don't, don't. Jared Canornier is naturally a 205, and he's coming down, which means he is going to have that light heavyweight power. There's nothing really proprietary about Jared Canornier's skills, with all due respect. He's not the strongest wrestler. He bears significant power, but not the most methodical and technical of strikers, to say the least. So I think the keys to victory here, obviously, is Jared Canornier is going to want to close his distance, make this a close fight, and land those heavy shots. Try to get in of Silva's reach, because Silva is the longer fighter. I'm going to say that, of course, Anderson Silva is known to be that slow starter, but he's in Brazil. He needs to come back with authority and make a statement in front of his hometown fans. So Anderson Silva's got this. Not in the first round, I don't think, but I think in the second round. And you're going to see that Anderson Silva of the old is actually going to have effective counter-striking and not let, just let him wear unnecessary damage. He's going to do kind of like what he did in that Yushin Okami fight, and it is going to be by vicious TKO. Thank God. It's like I could just see the victory now, but nonetheless, we are going to the main event. We got strawweight champion putting her belt up for grabs once again, and that is Rose Namajunas taking on the deadly Brazilian striker, Jessica Andrade. <laughs> Now, Jessica Andrade coming off a deadly, deadly knockout against someone that no one could even really rub her in the past, and that's Carolina Kalaka. Oh, man, her name is impossible. Carolina Calculus. That is something that Rose couldn't do. That is something that Ioana Yerzizic didn't even come close to doing. That says so much about Jessica Andrade's scary power, and she is not a fighter that easily gets demotivated. Even after losing that title fight against Ioana Yerzizic when she was previously the champion, a fire lit under her ass, and she came back bigger, stronger, Stronger and smarter than ever. And that's something that a lot of fighters don't really do. Like Ioana Yerzizic, we've seen that before too. But Jessica Andrade bears significant power, which usually means for this fighter that bears a lot of aggression, which can be, once again, the word of the day, to their demise. Because sometimes they get sloppy or sometimes they can gas themselves out. Jessica Andrade's not one of those people that gets gassed out. She can go 25 minutes swinging for the fences, like in her stint against Ioana Yerzizic, like in her stint against Tisha Torres. But I find her striking to be very one-dimensional and that's something that I think that Rose Namajunas can exploit because she's very diverse in her striking and she is very calm, which aggressive fighters hate. Like when Yuan Irojizic fought Rose Namajunas twice, tried to get into Rose's head and really piss her off. She became even more pissed off after the fight when she realized that Rose knocked me out and Rose took me to decision with such a calm demeanor. Rose Namajunas is on fire. Fire. And she can take it to the ground with tons of confidence. Jessica Andrade's gonna come in like a bulldog, and Rose is just gonna keep it at bay with that jab, or at least try to. I think Jessica Andrade is gonna be swinging for those fences, but I think her main goal is to set it up with those big bombs and get in close and take it to the ground and work that ground and pounds because she is vicious at that. Because it's not to say that Rose isn't the better fighter, because in my opinion, I believe technically she may be. But sometimes when someone has an unprecedented power, sometimes that power when used appropriately, which I feel Jessica does, it's just unstoppable. So Rose has to prevent it from going to the ground because I think that is where she will lose points. And that's where the judges will not to give it to Jessica Andrade. And being in Brazil, I think this is going to be very, very scary for Rose. I think Jessica Andrade's going to take it here. I just think her chin is so frustrating to deal with when looking out of the eyes of Rose Namajunas because you really can't hurt this girl. She literally is the true cyborg of that strawweight division. I'm just going to think that the home crowd is really going to give Jessica Andrade the surge that she needs and the energy and the power and that she needs and the excitement to hold that strap in front of a hometown that she is going to find a way to win. She's just going to be brutally vicious for that full 25 minutes. And although the demeanor of Rose is going to be proven effective in this fight because I think Rose is still going to have a fantastic performance. I just think the pressure of Jessica Andrade, the level changes of Jessica Andrade, the bullying of Jessica Andrade is just going to be too much for Rose Namajunas to handle. And I think Jessica Andrade is going to be taking this via unanimous decision, crowning her the new strawweight champion of the world. I am so excited to watch this fight. Please tune in. I promise you it is well worth the money. Thank you so much for watching. It has been one hell of a ride. Stay tuned because we got more fights coming up this week. Yay, me. Love me or hate me doesn't take from the fact that I love you guys very much. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like or a dislike, a comment, either negative or positive. Doesn't matter. Argue with me, side with me. Who cares? We all have our opinions. Sometimes I'm right, mostly. Sometimes I'm wrong. Actually, that's mostly. I love you guys. Thank you.
you once again hit the notification bell. Subscribe if I haven't said that already, but I probably have because I really want to reiterate that subscribing is a necessity for your life. Thank you, and we are going to see you next week. Oi!